Now, Ian Schuler is uh, works at the State Department. He is the guy in charge of the Internet in a Suitcase. Oh, the Internet in a Suitcase. I and, love that name. Well, uh, he was asked, and he spilled the beans. Now, remember, this is a very expensive program, this Internet in a Suitcase. We Remember we reviewed the documents and uh, I think there was $30 million set aside for the Internet in a Suitcase project. And uh, when you hear Internet in a Suitcase, what, what, do you, what do you envision, John? What does it sound like it is to you? Well, when I first heard it, I was thinking it was some sort of a kit that you could, you know, that maybe had a satellite uh, feed and you could get on the Internet. But I re- more recently, I'm led to believe that it's the entire Internet <laughs> jammed onto some mega terabytes worth of uh, whatever you can get into a suitcase. Well, this is a, a rather long clip, but I think it's well worth listening to. Because remember, you know, we have our Secretary of State coming out, so, you know, loose for Clinton. Oh, we've got the Internet in a suitcase. We're so cool. We're helping everybody. You see, like, like guys smuggling suitcases with Internet in it and stuff. Sounds great, right? Sounds like we're really like America. F yeah. Well, here's Ian explaining how it came to be and what it is. Sasha, you want to just elaborate a little on how this thing works that, that, that helps people uh, get around any, any government intervention? Uh, sure. Uh, let me first start by cautioning you about starting memes. <laughs> <laughs> and what's interesting is the actual, the true history of the Internet in a Suitcase was that when Jim Glantz, who did a really great job on this article, contacted us and said, so what is it that you're doing? And we explained, well, we're doing all this programming, we're developing this software, it can run on a whole bunch of different devices and turn them into blah, 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 and then it just ended up not really capturing anyone's attention. He's like, so what is the thing that comes out of it. I'm like, well, it's sort of a distributed infrastructure. It's not on any device. <laughs> and he's like, so we have a photographer coming tomorrow. What is he going to photograph? And we're like, that's a good question. And so literally we went out and bought a suitcase and took <laughs> a bunch of equipment that we had around the office that is sort of the examples of what this technology can run on and put it into a suitcase. <laughs> can you believe this crap? What? Yeah. It's just basically a couple of routers and maybe well, some code. Oh, it's even better than that. I just wanted to stop to pause here for a second just to say, really, you 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 fleeced the press by throwing some crap into a suitcase you bought that day for the photographer so that, so that you would here's our internet in the suitcase. Really? That's what you did, you idiot? That's wow. ins- that's insulting. This is clip of the day. Really? Hit the jingle. Oh, well, I wasn't ready for that. I have so much well, more. You to never talk. are. You don't even know what the clip of the day is. Clip of the day. All right. Always let's, caught off guard by the clip. But of the it day. gets better. Well, it's a clip of the day. It should. <laughs> and the rest is history. So yeah. I view the, the internet rest in the is su- history. The rest is history. That's right. The rest is people. Uh, the Lucifer stand there. We've got the very important internet in the suitcase project. Thirty million dollars. Well, okay, Ian Douchebag Schuler, why don't you explain what's in your internet in the suitcase for real? Cases, it's actually a visual aid gone out of control. <laughs> <laughs> it was a meme. <laughs> we were so awesome. It was like Goatsy, only better. <laughs> but the, the idea behind what we're developing, which is actually the important component mm-hmm. here, is that you can use the technologies, the hardware that are on the ground today in these locations. You don't actually need to para-drop in a giant internet in a suitcase. You can transform people's available cell phones, laptops and computers, wireless routers that you might pick up here in the States at best. Now listen very closely, particularly sysadmins, uh, network administrators. You're going to laugh when you hear what they're actually doing. Best Buy or what have you. Best Buy. Into your telecommunications infrastructure. And if you use software like the type that we're creating, you don't need a central cell tower. You don't even need an internet uplink to communicate locally. And you can imagine, if you can set up a system whereby there is no center, there's no point of surveillance, there's no point of control, there's no point to shut down. There's just a bunch of different equipment that people are turning on, turning off, that's creating this network of connectivity for sharing information, for distributing the phone pictures before your phone actually gets confiscated, that that becomes a very powerful tool. Now, if you have an uplink of any sort, 
a satellite phone, a dial-up modem, etc. This will spread that connectivity throughout that network. But if you don't have an internet uplink, you still maintain local connectivity. And so you can think about this as, what's the first thing anyone that has an office with a bunch of computers do? They network all of those computers together and start sharing files, printers, other services and applications. What we're doing is saying, how do we take that same powerful tool and put it into the hands of anyone that wants to set up a network? So the technology is actually, the components of it exist today. And what we're really focusing on is, how do we make them user-friendly, and how do we integrate these best of technologies from projects all around the globe into a single package that can be transported, not in a gigantic suitcase, but on your cell phone, on a USB drive, on a CD-ROM, on your laptop, or any other storage medium on Earth. So what this asswipe is saying... Was, it, was Vivek Kundra behind this? Yeah, of course. They took $30 million and gave it to companies to basically create something that we in 1994 called an intranet. Essentially, they just configured Ubuntu on a stick. And that's your internet in a suitcase? Really? It's, this is so unbelievable. It's just Ubuntu on a stick. That's what it sounds like. Or Ubuntu Live, probably. Or so something. One yeah. of the things. Ubuntu Live. Yeah, yeah probably sticks, Ubuntu yeah. Live. Ubuntu Live. Which is, and then it people don't it, know is yeah. the one that's just self-booting without destroying the OS you have. Right. It, it boots from the from a from a thumb from the drive. Stick. Yeah, and and then it has a and it turns your Wi-Fi into a access point. You've got a router. Big F and deal. Thirty million dollars, really. And then to lie about it and make it sound all spiffy as internet in a suitcase. I swear to God, I was under the impression it was the entire internet downloaded into. Uh, <laughs> really? X number of terabytes because it's doable. I mean, I mean, Google has a copy of the internet. Yeah, of course yeah. they have a million servers. They have more than one copy, obviously. Right, right. But still, it's like it's just it's so insulting. And then to laugh about <laughs> what boneheads those media folk are. <laughs> they media idiots. out there. You're idiots. <laughs> wow, you douchebag. The clip of the day. Yeah. Well, you think that's good? You yeah, think, you're not going to top that. Oh, yeah, I'm going to top it. No. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm going to top it. I'm going to top it. 